Who would predict the championship? Us, that's who. And we do it very badly. Although we do make a couple of correct predictions once in a while. And watch out, we might jinx your team as well by backing them. Right, so it's time for Game Week 14 predictions. And with me is my co-host, Mark Ryman. How are we getting on, Mark? I'm all right. Who said this is getting easier? This is ridiculous. I'm getting worse and worse as the weeks go on. Um, but yeah, never mind. Let's see if we can get any better this week. <laughs> yeah, well, I I put Sunderland as my lock of the week, and then you they did. promptly drew to QPR uh, and chucked in probably one of their worst performances of the season. So that happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it didn't help they had a player sent off, and, uh, but you're right. Oh, they weren't even great before, before that. that. Yeah, you're right. Even, yeah. even before Job was sent off, you know, it, right. it didn't really look like their kind of day, did it? Oh, how yeah. did your lock Who are you going to jinx this week? <laughs> oh, I haven't decided yet. I haven't decided. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it, it's not it's not been it's not been good all round. To be honest, is it? Um, let's be honest. It's, yeah, it's it's not been good. Um, We'll uh, yeah, we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about how badly I did when we go through the predictions. But uh, yeah, not good for me either. Oh, it happens. But before we kick this off, if you're watching this on our YouTube, which is of course the only place you can watch this, like the video and subscribe to our channel for even more championship content. Let's kick this off with the first game on a Tuesday night. It's Bristol City versus Sheffield United. Yeah, um, and Sheffield United off the back of a really impressive 2 0 win away at Blackburn Rovers, doing what Sheffield United do. Um, and there's me wondering why I'm terrible at making predictions because I've now predicted them to lose. Um, but not really because of them. I'm just really excited by how well Bristol City seem to be doing at the moment. They've been picking up points, they, they got a good result last game as well. Um, and you know, to go away to Preston and win three one is is no mean feat. So I think that for that reason and at home with the support of the fans uh, behind Liam Manning as well, I've gone for a tight two one win. So that that's my justification. It's probably a bit of an emotional one, but that's the reason for it. Um, th there's every chance that Sheffield United do a Sheffield United and hold them out and, and win comfortably one or two nil. But yeah, two one for me, Bristol City. So it's crazy that I've also backed Sheffield United to lose, which means because both of us have backed them to lose, they're going to win. So I've gone 1-0 Bristol <laughs> City for the same reason as you. I feel right now the team, the fans, they're all united behind Liam Manning. So it, it makes it a really special place at Ashton Gate. I'm predicting this purely on the basis of the warm and fuzzies. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> But at the same time, Bristol City, they're looking so good this season. Um, yes, they had the sort of, you know, a little wobble. But I think that was mainly because we were both saying, yeah, they look so great. And then they promptly lost two games. So maybe they're just doing that to spite us. Who knows? Yeah, they were doing the Bristol City inconsistency thing. And we just expected that to carry on throughout the season as it tends to do. But yeah, yeah you're right. They've really started putting some results together and uh, and shoring it up at the back as well. So, yeah. Um, well, at least I'm not on my own with that prediction. So, <laughs> yeah, as you say, we've definitely jinxed it now. But... Oh, yeah. There, there's some rationale to it. And Sheffield United fans were just starting to like me as well because I did a whole video saying that they were going to walk the league. But never mind, never mind. It's a long season to get fans to like us again. We'll worry about that later on. Uh, let's talk about Oxford United versus Hull City. Uh, two teams that just can't buy a win. Um, again, as part of my terrible predictions last time, I, I predicted Hull to beat Portsmouth 3-0. They promptly drew 1-1. Um, so I'm just going on the same again, please. 1-1. Uh, Oxford aren't winning at all at the moment. Um, and they're really, you know, they're, they're struggling to pick up three points. Hull uh, flattering to deceive uh, at times. They've got the players, as we've mentioned before, but aren't getting the results. So, yeah, 1-1. Carry on. So I've gone Oxford 2, Hull 1. And yes, both these teams have been drawing a lot. So Oxford had three draws and then back-to-back -back losses, whereas Hull have um, 
had back-to-back losses and then three draws. So it's sort of, um, you know, back yeah. to front for both of them. Um, so it's a weird one, but I am backing Oxford at home because I, I feel they will get back onto it. They, they've been, I mean, they did chuck in an absolute stinker of a performance. Um, which one was that where they were absolutely shocking? I think Sunderland's, Sunderland. they were absolutely shocking, yeah. Um, I, I don't see that happening again. Like normally, you'd follow up a performance like that with a better performance. Maybe the, the step up to the championship has sort of caught up with them. Maybe yeah. just a bit, but I do feel there's like so much quality in that team that they just blew me away when I saw them with my own eyes at Kenilworth Road. They they were so good. So I'm backing them here. I am. Yeah, I mean we we both we both really like Oxford and, and their team spirit, um, but yeah, two poor results. Swansea at home though isn't an easy game for anyone, so you, you can understand it. But yeah, they've got to turn things around soon. Yeah, and I think this is the game where they do, uh, but I, I won't make them the lock of the week because that's just the kiss of death, isn't it? Right, yeah. one two, QPR versus Middlesbrough. Right. Uh, mental prediction of the week: QPR two, Borough one. Now, look, I, I, I think maybe uh, that QPR will feel like they they have started to turn a corner. I mean, they've not won a game. Um, well, apart from oh, the they, one they, we know about, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of beat, course they beat Luton. Yeah, of, of course. Yeah, why, why wouldn't they? But um, apart from that. It's all been draws. <clears throat> they did have four losses in a row. They've they've now drawn drawn three games, um, but it's also worth you know noting who they've been drawing against as well. And you know though those teams um, are not easy teams to play against by any stretch. Sunderland, as you said, threw in a bit of a stinker, um, but it's still a tough game at home. So uh, I, I take that as the, as the kind of springboard for for this game. Um, on the flip side, Borough have just been on the back of a 3-0 hammering by Coventry. Now, whether that says more about Coventry than Borough, I'm not sure. But And, and we know that Coventry are Borough's bogey team, um, definitely. <laughs> uh, but still, losing 3-0 at home has, has got to be a bit of a shot to the system. I think this is a tough game to follow it up. I really do. Um, so that's my, my reasoning for it. QPR have got to win a game at some point. I think it's going to be this one call me crazy and we didn't actually collude prior to this because people <laughs> will think that yeah. i've gone qpr one middlesbrough nil purely yeah. based on th- the same rationale i think qpr have turned that corner i know that's like again one of the worst things you can say but that was a very good performance against sunderland and it looks like they found their midfield three that works for them and it's about winning games in midfield. And I think at Loftus Road, Millsborough won't like going down there. It's a long journey, especially, you know, midweek and off the back of that Cov game as well. It's, uh, you know, it's going to be a tough one. I still think Middlesbrough are very wasteful in front of goal. You know, they should have put Norwich to bed in that three-all game. Yeah, but I, yeah. I, I feel I'm backing the underdogs this week. That's that's the kind of thing I'm going for. I mean, it's impossible to predict, isn't it? It really is mad. So there, there's absolutely no reason not to. Um, I think Borough fans are going to feel a bit dejected after Saturday's result anyway, aren't they? So I doubt that many would argue. We'll see. Yeah, and I doubt many will be watching this as well because they'll be that dejected about that performance. Right, on Fair to... Enough. Yeah, <laughs> on to Sheffield Wednesday versus Norwich. And Wednesday have to step this up, don't they? Because uh, they, they, the they threw in an they threw in an absolute stinker in that second half. Yeah, just a bit. Um, it's that Ron yeah. Burgundy moment, boy. That escalated quickly, <laughs> didn't it? <laughs> didn't it just? Where did Bayo come from? It's a bit like Tom Cannon in the Stoke game, isn't it? Just like one game, four goals, bang, done. Um, probably not see a single goal from him again after that. But yeah, I think. <laughs> I mean, fair play to Watford, they, they were excellent, but Sheffield Wednesday just fell apart completely. And it's not something you would normally say of a Danny Roll team either, you know, uh, it's, especially at home. I, I was really thrown by that, particularly as Watford's away form has been toilet on top of it. Um, 
So, yeah, just talking about how difficult it is to predict the league. I mean, talking of a lack of confidence going into a game as well, I can't see anything other than the Norwich win. I know they lost last minute against Covent- uh, Coventry, Cardiff, and and that's going to sting. But actually, you know, they, they had the far better chances to win that game. They will be absolutely gutted that they, they didn't get anything from it. And can we just have a... a a C as to whether Borgia Science even makes it to the summer before being snapped up by a Premier League team at this rate. Top I mean, scorer. the man is ridiculous. Yeah, but it's not just the amount. It, the, the goals, I mean, the one against Cardiff, I watched that goal at least three times and I still can't work out how the angle of the ball on his foot leaves the way it does and then ends up where it does in the goal. It looks when it leaves his foot as if it's going to exit the stadium, it's going so high and let the dip that he gets oh it's just ridiculous um what a player so on his own i i, I don't as long as he's playing I, I don't bet against norwich at the moment so yeah for that reason i've gone for sheffield wednesday one norwich three um i i can't see anything else than other than that result but you know one of these two teams have got to turn around um and bounce back from their last game i think it's norwich so even with I'm backing underdogs, but before I give my... Actually, I'll just say I'm going Wednesday 1, Norwich 1. Um, motivated in large by the fact that Josh Sargent's out for a while, although mm. Borja signs, you know, he can do it by himself. How many goals do you think he scored this season? Mm, he's on something like 7. 7? Seven? 11. Is he on 11? He's on okay. 11. And wow. do you know who the next highest scorer is? No, I'm not gonna. I'm not even gonna guess, but it must be six or seven or something along those lines. Sure, Josh Madger it. on eight. Yeah. Okay. That's eight, mad. Yeah. yeah. That's, it's it's crazy. And all, yeah. And it it all is, screamers. They're all amazing goals as well. Incredible <laughs> player. Norwich need to get promoted if they want to keep hold of him, and even then, it might be touch and go. Really. Yeah. Um, but as to the one-one, I just think. Sheffield Wednesday cannot follow up of that performance they put in against Watford with another stinker against uh, Norwich at Hillsborough because it's a it's a big stadium. There are a lot of fans there, and it will turn. It will turn really dramatically, I think. So, I think they're going to play up, and I, I do see them, you know, sort of defending well. Um, Especially, they've got to close down Borja signs. Don't don't let him put it on either foot, really. Just got to two-foot him. As soon as the ball goes to him, just bum-rush him. <laughs> yeah, Great. that's the only way I see it. Great tactical awareness there. That's, that's that level of astute masterclass tactical awareness that people watch this for, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not even a, a UA for accredited coach. I've always said it, you know, just... Uh, Essentially, don't let Borja signs get a shot off. You know, as soon as he goes for it, just dive in like Phil Jones, head first. <laughs> yeah, right there you go. That's the that's the tactic. <laughs> right on to Plymouth Argyle versus Portsmouth, and Plymouth have to follow up a absolute dire performance uh, with a proper performance this week, don't they? Yeah, they do, and. I struggled with this one as a prediction, and you're right. They did have a dire performance. They were away at Leeds, so it's tough. It's a tough place to go, blah, blah, blah. Pompey can't do better than a draw most games as well, although, you know, a draw away at Hull is a good result. I've still gone for a Plymouth win because it's at home, um, and I think there will be a reaction from Rooney's side. But as we've said, key players out, um, Suzoko being out, um, as we were talking about before recording this, is going to have an impact there too. Um, but yeah, it's going to be close. I've gone for Plymouth 2-1, just because I think at home there's going to be reaction and, and Pompey just struggling to get any more than a point. I've also backed a Argyle home win. I've gone Plymouth 1, Pompey nil, And I feel Pompey, yeah, they, they do have to turn a corner. They do. Um, but this, this is going to be a battle. This one, you know, it's two teams scrapping for points, and I feel because of the performance Plymouth put in, we'll see what type of manager Wayne Rooney is now. Like, what sort of you know performance he gets out of that Plymouth team, 
because they can't be as bad as they were <laughs> last game. It was. I, I I don't think they even got out of their half. Um, I can't remember the stats off the top of my head, but they were frankly quite embarrassing. Crazy. Yeah. yeah, it was mad. Um, they, but yeah, I'm back in Plymouth here. They had a shade of Plymouth's first first game of the season about them, didn't they? Against Sheffield Wednesday. Um, when it was just oh, like yeah. thirty shots, it was a very similar type of performance. Yeah, they need to they need to turn that round. Right on to the last Tuesday night game. We have Swansea versus Watford. Well, um, both both won. Um, nothing else to report about both of those wins. I don't think um, both relatively tight games, weren't they? Um, that they're both involved in. <laughs> um, I don't know where to go with this other than I think Swansea um, at home maybe uh, just edge it. Look, I think it's difficult, isn't it? It's after a team win 6-2 away from home, but pre- prior to that, their form away from home has been absolutely terrible. Is it, a, is it a corner turned or was Sheffield Wednesday that bad? Well, I suppose we'll find out. I've gone for 2-1 Swansea. Um, you, you can call it an agenda if you like. And you might be right, um, but I'm going two one Swans. I like Swansea. I think they've done they they have done well if they're a little bit inconsistent. And I still need to be convinced by Watford away from home. Yeah, I I don't think it's a corner turned away from home. I think Sheffield Wednesday were just that bad, quite frankly. Yeah, and I, I can't look past Swansea either. Bias aside. Um, Swansea have been one of the tightest defenses in the league, but they've also been one of the you know the, the least prolific attacks. Uh, I think you going two one is quite optimistic, considering they've only scored two goals in two games. Um, the rest have been squeaky ones, you know. So I've gone one nil Swansea. Uh, I can't see them notching a double, but I can see them dominating the ball in this game. And, you know, Watford not getting near them. But I also see Swansea squandering a lot of chances because that's what they do. But they do play very nice football up to the final third. So it will be a nice Mm. one to watch. Um, Right, on to the Wednesday night games. We have Blackburn Rovers at home versus Stoke City. (laughs) Yeah, I think I predicted Stoke to win. Notice I said at home. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> as well um, yeah. I'm not going to put it into win this I think Blackburn uh, despite losing their last home game I think generally a, a bit like with Watford I still think just you know what one poor result doesn't mean that their home form should be completely discounted um, yes they lost 2-0 but they lost 2-0 to as we know a very very good outfit Sheffield United um, Stoke City aren't that team they're not that threat Um and they won their last game, but I think that it's very different against Blackburn. I've gone for a tight game, 1-0 Blackburn. Ah, oh, so you have Blackburn. You have backed Blackburn at home. Yeah, he's, yeah he's I gave safe. myself yeah. a little tongue twister there. Yeah, you can't <laughs> not back Blackburn at God, home. You're doing it to yourself they... now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a glutton for punishment. Uh, I... <laughs> Go on. I've, I've also... I've also gone for a Blackburn home win. Boom. I backed Blackburn yeah, back at home. 2-1 st- against Stoke. Um, I, I I do think Stoke have definitely turned a corner. They look so much better under Pellack and it's so funny because we're saying, what are they doing? Bring this guy in. Uh, he's, not, he's made them look pretty decent. Um, yeah. Stoke did well to grab that win last game as well, but I mean, Blackburn, they're just, they're decent. And I'm thinking they have an outside shot of the playoffs here, especially with the home form. They just need to get back off on that horse after that Sheffield United game. Um, so, yeah, I'm backing them here. Big backing for Big Blackburn backing Rovers. For Blackburn at home. Yeah, there yeah. you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Coventry City versus Derby County. <laughs> the one game I didn't predict them to win. And this is what happens. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not going to make that mistake again. Sorry, Cov fans. This might be the kiss of death. 2-0 Coventry. I, you know, they've, they've been brilliant. Um, they were absolutely excellent against Borough. Um, and and Borough marking for their for their goals was very poor. 
Um, defensively, they were a bit all over the place and, and, and Coventry took advantage. But, you know, uh, their forward line started firing and we know how much of a threat they are when they do. I think at home to Derby, I don't think Derby can cope with them. 2-0 Coventry for that reason. Yeah, 100%. I've also gone Coventry 2, Derby 0. I think Cov, the corner has been turned. The football is absolutely champagne vintage now. They're going to shoot up the table. I think they're going to be very tough to 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 to, to beat. And I'm I'm impressed with their defense, uh, especially. Um, can't think of his first name, so I'll call him Jar Jar Binks. Um, Binks is very good, and um, I don't know where they got him from. Is he like a, a Cov Academy player? Because he's I'm not sure. Uh, he's no. a hell of a player. I was very impressed with him, and. Yeah, I, I just I, I can see this being the, the start of the run for Cov to the playoffs, you know, as we predicted them to be in, you know, yeah. all our preseason content, you know, because Mark Robbins is amongst one of the best managers in the league and they have one of the best squads in the league. They've assembled it so well. So I, I just see them winning this and then going on even more of a run. Uh, the corner has been turned. Yeah, absolutely. You don't you don't have a forward line like that with a manager as good as Mark Robbins and stay as bad as they have done for that long. You really don't. They do need to start seasons quicker. <laughs> they really do. I know. It, they only start when the clocks go back. That, that's what they do. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, interesting. But yeah, no, I'm with you. Run. Right, on to Millwall versus Leeds. The Millwall agenda continues. Um <laughs> it sounds bad. They're seventh, they're really, seventh in the table, mate. I know, I know. And they were brilliant against Burnley as well. And, and wow, what a result for them. I mean, but, but Burnley Burnley being experts in sideways and backwards par, passing. There's the Scott Parker that we were thinking was going to be there for the start of the season. There he is. I knew he was there somewhere. Um, but fair play to Millwall. They're excellent. And I was all ready to predict them to win. I was like, right, I'm definitely going to... And then I looked at who they're playing. Um, and this is the problem, is that I, I find it really difficult to back anyone other than Leeds. So this isn't about Millwall, although Millwall at home are a very strong side. I still think that Leeds are far too good for every other team in this in this league on their day. I think they can beat anyone comfortably, and that includes Millwall. So for that reason, and it isn't an agenda, I promise, uh, Millwall nil leads to. Oh, well. But we, we should actually uh, compare before we do this because I've also gone Millwall nil leads to yeah. I feel Leeds will Leeds won't go full throttle here because it's a three game week. Um, so I reckon they'll probably, you know, pounce on Millwall quite early and then back off and try and defend the lead while Millwall just like send a barrage into the box for Half man, half giraffe, Jake Cooper to try and nod <laughs> in. Uh, I have to say, he, Jake Cooper scored one of the best headers I've seen. Yeah. That was sublime. Uh, what a player. What yeah. a player he is. But I, I can't... I, I think winning three games on the spin and then having leads, like, yeah, Neil Harris has his work cut out here. He really does. Uh, I, I can't see another 1-0 Millwall. Neil Harris masterclass. Uh, all I can see is Leeds winning here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think going forward, on their day, they're they're too good. They are. They're the best team in the league. Um, yeah, probably a touch better than Sheffield United. Um, right on to Luton Town versus Cardiff. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to just reel out some cliches, but this really can go one of two ways. Um, I, and I've gone with the optimistic, but it could easily go the other way. Uh, optimistic from from a Luton point of view, that is. Um, and I've gone for a home win. I've gone for a 3-1 based on um, the fact that we're, Alfie Doughty is going to be back against his old side, getting crosses in and feeding players like Eli um, and Carl Morris, um, who didn't have that same level of service against West Brom. It has to be said, that was a scrappy old game. 
um, that the neutrals must have hated. I would say this, it will be great for Luton fans to see some more 3pm kickoffs because there's absolutely no way in hell in the second half of the season that Sky Sports are going to be choosing many Luton games after that. So that would be nice. Um, yeah, I've gone for 3-1 on that level of optimism. However, it has to be said um, that Cardiff's run of form um, under... Ex Watford, Omar Rizza, um has been excellent, um, and they'll have all the incentive in the world to to do one over it on Luton. And as I said, it could easily go the other way. I'm just being, just trying to be optimistic about this one from a Luton point of view. So yeah, Luton three, Cardiff one. I said it in the Luton match preview, and I'm going to say it now. You're delusional. They're the most informed <laughs> team in the league. And this is coming from someone that has backed Luton to pretty much win say. every single game. I am the king of delusion. I'm the delusion meister. And I've predicted Luton to lose here 2-1 to Cardiff. I, I can't see us getting anything from this game. I really can't. And, and regarding 3 p.m. kickoffs, yeah, remember all the TV schedules were picked before a single ball had been kicked in the championship. And Sky realised mm -hmm. that Luton Town would be stinking out the championship. So, yeah, I reckon exactly. a lot more 3 p.m. kickoffs for us moving forward, which is lovely jubbly. That's all I'll say. Yeah. Cardiff, on the other hand, enjoy Friday nights away. <laughs> You're gonna love oh, them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's it's absolutely the, the, these kickoff times are obscene. They really are. Yeah, they are right on to. Preston North End versus Sunderland. Is this a relative local derby type thing? Because they're both up north. No, they're both other sides oh. of the country, though. <laughs> it's a very <laughs> skinny part of the country. It is, it is a bit yeah, skinnier, yeah. I, I mean, yes, they're both up north. But, uh, yeah, Preston being in Lancashire and, and uh, Sunderland being in the northeast, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's slightly less of a trip than, like, you know, Plymouth or something, definitely. Um, but no, I, I don't. Th I don't think so. Maybe Sunderland or or or, or Preston fans feel free to to correct me. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's there's no sort of derby there. But um, I've gone for a tight Sunderland win, um, just because I think that they're the better, easily the better of the two sides. Obviously, they're going to be without Joe Bellingham for this game. That's going to make a big difference to their midfield. But still, I think they, they've got the quality going forward um, to, to win the game. They weren't particularly impressive against QPR. They'll still win more games um, than they'll lose regardless. Um, and I think, yeah, Preston, just they're not particularly inspiring me with any confidence. They win the odd game and then, and then do pretty poorly for the next two or three. So, yeah, for that reason, Preston won, Sunderland two. It's a weird one with Preston because they were doing so well. Mm. Went on a massive unbeaten run. They lose a game and they're 20th. So yeah. I, I I don't... Th this league, it's crazy tight. But at the same time, I, I felt like they were putting a tremendous run together. And, and that game against Bristol City, I sort of build that as two unbeaten Titans coming together and mm. then what well, what well, Preston the 20th I didn't see that were coming at all um but I do think that defensively they're good Liam Lindsay's good Freddie Woodman yes he had an absolute stinker in the last game but yeah I, I as I said I'm backing the underdogs and this is just as I've gotten back into the good graces of all the Sunderland fans I'm going Preston North End one Sunderland one Okay. I, 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 you know, I, I don't, I, I think Sunderland need to bounce back after that, but you need all your players to be firing like Mundell. Where was he against uh, QPR? He didn't turn yeah. up. Uh, Bellingham, he took an early bath, you know, and uh, yeah, I, obviously they have a lot of other talents like, you know, yeah. Isidore and um so much talent, but at the same time, I think Preston just going to be defending, defending, defending. Liam Lindsay is going to have to play out of his skin. I guess we'll see. We will. Um, it could happen. Yeah. Um, just think Sunderland's quality 
They've not played many times like they played against QPR, if any. So maybe the Plymouth game. So yeah, they'll, uh, I think they'll bounce back, but we'll see. We will. And the final game, West Brom versus Burnley. What happens when, what is the opposite of an unstoppable force hitting an immovable <laughs> object? Yeah. Exactly. Corboran the, versus Parker. Parker. Oh, God. It's going to be attritional, people. <laughs> it's going to be attritional. Well, who knows? It could be like 5-5 five, five or something. But if anything screams nil-nil, it's this one. And that's exactly the score I've predicted for that reason. <laughs> uh, West Brom just love a draw. And Burnley have reverted to Scott Parker ball, where they're afraid to get it forward to any of their excellent players. Uh, yeah, maybe we were... Uh, maybe, maybe I'm being too harsh. You know, they, they sit fourth, um, I think, as we speak, don't they? Or, or, or close to the top still. But yeah, poor, poor few results for them. Three games now um, without a win. And as I said, West Brom just absolutely love attritional football, despite their excellent, excellent squad and team on paper. So yeah, nil nil. Can be a fun one. Yeah, I've I've also gone for a nil nil. Um <laughs> five draws on the spin for West Brom. Uh having seen them first hand at Kenilworth Row, they're quite uninspiring. Um I and with Burnley, I don't know what's happened to that, that Burnley side that turned up at um at, at Kenilworth Road as well. Uh, no idea. Um obviously the transfer window happens. Mm. But they don't want to take shots. It's pass, pass, pass revolution. And um, they're, they're not, you know, when they do shoot, they're, they're, they're sh- I don't understand why they're, they're shooting from where they're shooting or when when the chance presents to shoot, they don't. And uh, Burnley fans are actually calling for Parker to leave now, which is madness. Like they need wow. to check themselves. Yeah, they're yeah, fourth in the table. Yeah. They've only lost twice. They conceded six. They need to, you know, have their heads examined. It's absolutely mad. Like Burnley fans watching this, let us know in the comments why do you want Scott Parker to leave? It's absolutely mad. Um, reg- he knows how to get people promoted. Yeah, I think the problem is that you know they've been spot. There's a couple of things. I mean, Burnley have got a huge injury list, haven't they? Um, uh, so that doesn't help. Um, lots of players out and, and some pretty and pretty important ones as well um so there is that um they have fallen off in terms of their attacking um their, their attacking premise in, in games um i think from the burnley fans that i spoke to i think parker was always a bit of a 50 50 appointment anyway um, it's very difficult to follow that Vincent Company season, um, despite how badly he did with them in the Premier League. I think Scott Parker felt like a bit of an uninspiring choice, despite his record. Um, and so I don't think it, it takes much, does it? But you're right. You know, they're still sitting forth. They've still uh, they're still up there, thereabouts. That you know, they they aren't the strongest squad in the league. They're probably the second strongest squad in my, in, in my eyes, or or close to Leeds, but still. You know, I think that um, that there's still time for them to to turn things around and to get some of those injuries back. Um, that will certainly help. Okay, and now it's time to let us know who's your lock of the week. Yeah, so it's it's quite a um, it's quite a difficult one. Um, because usually I go with my highest scorer, which would be with either with I be Luton or Norwich, and I'm not going for Luton for my lock of the week because that would be delusional, I think. Um, but I'm going to firmly jinx Coventry's run and go for them to beat Derby County two 0 So sorry, Cov <laughs> fans. I love that thought process. So I'm going for Cardiff against Luton as my lock of the week. <laughs> Because I have a terrible run with lock of the week. Whenever I pick someone for lock of the week, they promptly lose. So I'm going Cardiff 2, Luton Town 1 as my lock of the week. And I guess we'll see what happens with that. If my if my bad juju continues, we'll see. Fingers crossed. Yeah. No, no. Not <laughs> going to. Not, not doing that. No, neutral. Completely neutral. <laughs> but. What do you think is going to happen this game week? Let us know in the comments. And if you've gotten this far, 
in the video, please remember like the video and subscribe for even more championship content. And these midweek games, oh, they're, they're you know, they're, they're a killer. They're, they're brutal. Um, so I guess we'll see you again later this week for game week 15. Um, have a great week, whoever you support, and enjoy the games.